What's up everyone, Abe Kislevitz here, and today I'm really excited to finally share this workflow with you guys. We're gonna be looking at reframing 360 content in Adobe Premiere. We'll be walking through using the GoPro FX reframe plugin, which is brand new. I've got a download link in the description below, and it's not to be confused with the old reframe plugin that was used with Fusion. GoPro's been developing this plugin throughout the last year, and I've been involved along the way helping define some of the features in it. Definitely have to give it up to David Newman because he is the brains behind this plugin. We use this plugin to reframe all of the 360 content that we've edited in house at GoPro. And the great news is you can use it with both Fusion and GoPro Max. I would also say that this is pretty much the ultimate GoPro plugin for enhancing both your 360 content and regular GoPro content. But today I'm going to quickly run you through all of the basics to creating high quality reframed 360 content. So I've already converted my Max 360 files into an equirectangular ProRes file, which is the standard 360 file format. It's a two to one ratio. I've gotten a lot of questions wondering whether you can drop in the native .360 file straight from GoPro Max into Premiere. Unfortunately, it requires a transcode into this equirectangular format. If you want on the nitty gritty details, there's an awesome blog post that outlines all of the tech behind Max's new .360 file format, which is in the EAC projection format, it's equal area cube map. And we use the GoPro player to convert the EAC into an equirectangular. So it is stitched in camera. So the transcode process is a pretty basic transcode versus what you may be used to with fusion stitching. In my test, the process of transcoding max footage into this equirectangular format, it's about eight to 10 times faster than Fusion Studio stitching. I've already done a walkthrough of reframing the GoPro app, which is super similar to the desktop GoPro player reframing flow. You can open the .360 files directly in the GoPro player and reframe them right away, but for this demo, I converted the .360 to a ProRes to edit in Premiere. The advantages here are you have more fine-tuned controls over the reframe movements, as well as additional features such as lens correction. So to start, I'm going to drag in my converted equirectangular file into Premiere. Your source footage is likely 5.6K, but that doesn't mean that reframed content will be 5.6K. I think there's a common misconception between what the total resolution is and what reframed resolution means. The normal punch out from 5.6K is around 1080p. And we'll go up to File, New, Sequence. And I have a couple custom preset sequences here. 1080p, 30fps is what I want to do because I'm going to do a 16 by 9 reframe. And then after we do this 16 by 9 reframe, I'll show you how we can change this for something like an Instagram story or Instagram video. And the great thing about this plugin is it accounts for all these different sorts of file formats, so we don't have to redo all of the work. My source video was actually shot at 25 FPS. I shot it in France. I was dealing with lights that were flickering at 50 Hertz. So I did switch it to 25, so not to throw a wrench into the system. Yours is probably gonna be 1080p 30, but for this one, I'm gonna go up to settings and just switch this time base to 25 because I want my sequence to match my source files. And we'll name this GoPro Reframe. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is double click to open this in my source monitor. We can see this equirectangular file format, so it's the full 360, two to one ratio. And I'll just give you a brief walkthrough of this shot. Basically, I'm holding a camera on a long pole and I go through this whole apartment and kind of follow this action. If you haven't seen my tutorial walkthrough with the GoPro app, it's the same clip. So I'm just showing you how we do it on both different platforms. And so what we'll be doing is reframing this 360 content to look all around through this apartment. It's a good clip because it gives you a sense of space and kind of how cameras move in space. So to start, I'll just find where my endpoint is and that's where I start pulling the camera in. So right here, we'll hit I, and then we'll get to the very end where we wanna chop it off, probably around right here. That sounds good. So hit O for that, and I'm gonna drag these both into the timeline. So right away, it's gonna ask, the clip doesn't match the sequence settings, do you wanna change the sequence to match the clip settings? And we're gonna say no, we wanna keep the existing settings because we've set up the sequence to be what our output intention is gonna be. So for me, it's 1080-25, for you, it's probably 1080-30. So I'm gonna say keep existing settings. 
And then we're gonna go up to effect controls and just take a look at this original clip. The motion scale of this is 100%. And you wanna make sure that that stays at 100 because once we apply the GoPro FX reframe, it's gonna look at that and it is based on the clip being at 100%. So we're gonna go to effects and we'll just search GoPro FX and we can click and drag this onto the clip. So right away you'll see that the view slightly changed. Uh, we'll look at GoPro FX reframe over here and I'll walk through a little bit of the parameters. Projection is the first thing that you wanna take note of and that is what your intended output's gonna be. So by default it starts out at GoPro HD 16x9, 1920 by 1080 that's what we have our sequence settings set to. This will end up matching whatever your sequence output's gonna be. So you can see we can do social 9x16, we can do social 1x1, one one, but we'll go to HD 16x9. So the next thing that we see are all of our controls for the camera. So we have pan, tilt, rotate, lens curve, which is kind of like a lens distortion correction, and a zoom. And these are all things that we'll be adjusting, but we can actually adjust them visually on screen. So if you click the GoPro FX reframe header, it brings up this overlay on top of our video. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just pan this over so we can see this overlay a little better. You'll see we have some guides on screen and these help frame up the composition of your shots as if you were shooting this kind of content out in the field. The other thing you'll see on screen are these hot areas where you can affect the image by clicking in different areas on screen. What I would suggest is make sure you go down to your playback resolution and go down to a quarter if you can. If you're in 4K, I think you can go down to an eighth. That'll definitely help speed up this click and drag process. So in terms of affecting the image on screen, this whole middle inside area, if we click and drag, we can adjust the pan and the tilt. And then you can see this top little section and this bottom section both of these affect the zoom. So if we click and drag sideways, this zooms in the image and then zooms out. And you can see how it is adjusting this value here on the side. On the sides, both of these areas are identical on the left and the right. If we click and drag them up and down, it affects the rotation of the camera. And then lastly, all four of these corners affect the lens distortion or the lens curve property. So if we click and drag out, it pulls that distortion out and you can see the lens curve value goes up and we can click and drag it in and it goes in. So this is a little easier seen if I go and we look at some architectural areas but click and pull this guy out and you can see we're adjusting that to make it look much more like linear mode in GoPro or a real rectilinear lens which will definitely give your footage a more realistic looking view. So it makes it harder to tell that this comes from a 360 source if you have this high quality lens distortion built in. And so by default, if lens curve is set at zero and your zoom is set to 100, that will pretty much exactly match a Hero 8 in normal wide FOV. All right, the next thing that we wanna look at is under advanced controls, there is X and Y offset. This is something I personally asked for because I found that the center of rotation always happens right in the center of the frame, but sometimes you want your center of rotation to be slightly offset, just depending on how you wanna set up your shot. And so what I asked for is a control to physically shift the whole video up, down, left, or right, just so I could really get the right composition that I was looking for in my shots. So if you're trying to do like rule of thirds, it's really hard to get this horizon up here without getting a, a really big curvature in your lens. So what we can do is we get the horizon down right in the middle, which will give you a flat horizon, but then shift your Y offset, and you can do this by holding command and clicking in the middle you'll see that center guide moves. And this center guide is actually where your X and Y offset is. So we can immediately tell that our center is up and to the right because that center guide is there. 
And you want to be careful with this. You want to do it in small doses because what it's doing from the side that you're pulling from is it's just stretching out the image. In a 360 space, we don't have more video to pull from. Otherwise, it's still doing that same rotational effect if you were just to rotate. So what it's doing, it's stretching it in a smart way. You just have to be careful not to do it too far because you'll get some unwanted stretch effects if you, you really pull it out. So I use this for fine tuning, small adjustments, just to fix some compositional stuff here and there. And you'll find that it's actually really helpful if you're very involved in trying to get exactly the composition that you want. The last thing that I want to talk about here is motion blur. And I would recommend when you're doing your reframing, if you are using the visual cues to turn this off, just because it'll speed up the process. But what motion blur does is it adds realistic motion blur to the moves that you're doing on your 360 content. So this really adds a lot of realism to it. So if your camera is quickly panning left or right, it'll add natural motion blur based on the speed that your camera is moving left or right in this virtual space. By default, the shutter angle is set to 180 degrees. So increasing that will give you more blur and decreasing that will give you less blur. And if you don't want any blur at all, just uncheck motion blur and it won't render that out. The last thing that we'll look at before we start animating is this sync keyframes button. So in sync keyframes, I'll just have to show you to kind of explain, but I'm going to toggle the animation on for pan, tilt, rotate, lens curve, and zoom. And we're going to hit GoPro FX reframe to bring up our on-screen control. And I will pan forward in time. And I'm just going to move the camera like this. But you'll see it adds all these keyframes in unison. Because as you're adjusting things visually, more often than not, you kind of want all of these properties to be animating at the same rate throughout the whole video. So if I go here, and I adjust the tilt and the zoom, it still is adding a keyframe for every property so that everything gets changed in unison. And if this is unchecked, you'll see here, all I'm doing is adjusting the zoom. And so it's only adding a keyframe for zoom. And then once I come up over here, if I adjust a bunch of different things, it'll add keyframes there, but you'll notice that there's a big hole and a gap here. So things aren't changing at the same rate. So I always like to keep sync keyframes checked. Let's go back to the beginning and we're just gonna reset everything and start the keyframing process of reframing in 360. All right, so the actual keyframing process is pretty intuitive with this on-screen control. So I've unchecked motion blur so everything goes quickly. I've got my playback resolution set to one quarter so everything's moving quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and start by initiating keyframe animation for pan, tilt, rotate, lens curve, and zoom. And I'm going to swivel this up just so it's a little easier to see here. And this means that I want to be animating the properties for all of these. If you don't want to animate a certain property such as lens curve or zoom, you can just keep that unchecked. So the very first thing I'll do is find my first frame where I want this video to start. And Let's just say we want to look over here. There's this guy taking photos and I want it to be a little more zoomed out and I want this lens distortion to look pretty linear. So that's my first keyframe and I can just hit play or scrub through to the next zone. We'll zoom this in. So as this comes inside, I want the camera to turn back and look here and we'll look up. And I think I want this to be more zoomed out. So I'm just clicking and dragging in this bottom. That's the zoom and we can see here it comes in and then he jumps down and we obviously want to follow this action. So it's adjusting the pan and tilt automatically, but I'm going to go ahead and manually adjust the rotation. And then we want to follow them throughout this scene this way. And we'll adjust the rotation back this way. Pan it over. That looks pretty good. We can press play. There's a guy running down the stairs drinking coffee, so our controls come back up once we stop hitting play. Maybe we'll zoom in on him. And then let's look back here. This is me awkwardly holding the camera. 
really focused on actually getting the shot. And then as we come out the door, we'll swoop the camera around and we could reduce the lens correction effect if we want because this is kind of a cool room. It looks pretty cool to have everything kind of warped up. And then the camera goes low. We'll spin this way. It's kind of tricky because I, I get in the shot very easily. So I'm going to look way up here and then wait until I come back over here so I can look back. And you can see these guides and the rules of thirds here are helping me frame up this shot. And we'll do a little bit of a rotation. And as it comes out, we'll come up, rotate the other way, make it just kind of look like a floating camera. A little bit of a drone look. Uh, you can see me here, so we can just zoom right in. We'll pull that lens out. Just so you're aware, lens curve of 70 is right around where it is fully rectilinear. You can pull it all the way out to 100 and get some funky results, but 70 is kind of your magic number here if you want a fully linear look. And so we'll just add one more keyframe at the end. Okay. Keyframes in Premiere are a tricky thing and by default it's linear between all of them that motion is pretty terrible for things like this you'll see it just kind of bounces from one to the other and that is not a natural camera move at all and so what we want to do is get good eases between all of them and you can go pretty deep with figuring this out but my basic rule is select all of the keyframes and you do this by clicking and dragging those and then holding shift and select these first ones. Right click on the keyframes and go to continuous bezier. What that'll do is pretty much give you a very good ease and smooth motion between all of your keyframes right off the bat. So you'll see everything just kind of flows really nicely. It's a really nice curve. If there's any adjustments you need to make, you can go back in. I think right here I saw my foot down here. So we can go back in and zoom this in. But note that when we do make adjustments, it's just the way that the keyframes in Premiere work. It kind of breaks that smooth motion. So what I would recommend is go through, make all of your adjustments and changes, and then go back in, select everything, just like you did before, right click, switch it over to linear, that kind of resets everything, and then switch it back to continuous bezier. And that will redo all of that smooth motion between everything. If you really wanna go a little bit deeper, I would suggest doing some research on how keyframes and eases work within Premiere. But the basic notion is you can swivel down this pan and you'll see two different curves. One is sort of this velocity curve, and then the other one is your actual curve of what you're adjusting. By default, it does a really good job with continuous bezier that we don't have any hard corners. But if you do see, for example, if I make this adjustment, this break right here indicates that there's not a smooth motion between these. So what you're aiming to do is try to keep all of these transitions continuous. You can click in here and click and drag these handles out and you can end up making a smooth transition by finessing these things. But the difficult thing is sometimes you have to go in and adjust more than one. So that's why I recommend switching everything to linear and then back to continuous bezier just to make it easier on yourself unless you really want to go deep in adjusting a ton of keyframes. So let's check out the shot.
if you have source footage that is different frame rates, so let's say you shot some of your stuff at 30, some at 25, some at 24, or if you wanna make speed ramp adjustments to your videos, the way to do this is by nesting the clips. Let's say our sequence settings was actually 1080p 30, and this clip that I have is 25. What you'd wanna do is right click on the clip, go to nest, and we'll call this source 360 and go into the source and go to sequence settings and just make sure that that time base matches the original frame rate of the footage so this one is 25. So once you've nested your sequence now this is where if you wanted to perform some speed ramping adjustments I would do that specifically on a nest and not try to do that to the echo rectangular with the plugin on it because once you do speed ramping the keyframes kind of get all funked up so i suggest you have that nest everything is kind of locked in so now you can go into time remapping do your keyframing for speed ramps and things like that because everything's already set in stone so let's say i wanted to start this clip at 200 percent and ramp down to 100 it works because everything's already set inside of this sequence where all of my keyframes are. So that's something to note for speed ramping and combining different clips with different frame rates. The beauty of shooting 360 content is we can have it on whatever output size we want without having to crop in or recut the video in a different way where we lose some of the information. Many times I will do a reframe for something like 16 by 9 but then realize that I want to export it out for social or for an Instagram story. So right now I have my HD 16 by 9, 1920 by 1080 but let's say we want to export for Instagram stories. So we'll duplicate this 360 source. Let's call this reframed for social. Double click this sequence, looks the same but we'll go up to sequence sequence settings for social I know that it is 1080 horizontal by 1920 vertical and you'll see that right now we have this 16 by 9 crop in but we can just change this to social 9 by 16 and now all of a sudden we have the exact same video with all the moves that we had but in a different frame and obviously you want to go in and make some adjustments potentially like for this clip you see now that I'm in different areas so I could go in and click here I still have all these camera controls so I could zoom in here and just make some fine-tuned adjustments for these different frame sizes but it's really pretty quick to go from one source project that you've done all the reframing on to exporting different output resolutions if you feel like you're more familiar with After Effects and the way keyframes work there, you can go ahead and right click Replace with After Effects Composition and it'll bring over this clip with the Reframe plugin and all of the keyframes in it into After Effects. So it works over there just as well. All right, that's it for this tutorial with GoPro FX Reframe. I am really excited to share this workflow with you guys because it has been my go-to workflow for the past couple months and it has really changed the game in terms of getting high quality reframed 360 content exactly how you want it compositionally and with those extra tools like lens correction and motion blur. Thank you for tuning in to this pretty long tutorial, but I hope it has been helpful and stay tuned for more tutorials in the near future.